The Just Lead Advancing Racial Equity Conference, hosted by New Detroit, brought together national and local speakers who provided compelling insights into racial equity and justice. Kari Frazier, Detroit is Different, provides you conversations with some of the phenomenal guests, talking dismantling racism with collaborative solutions. I'm Dewan Dandridge, I'm CEO of Black Leeds Detroit, and I am loving my time here at Just Lead. Detroit is different, Just Lead Conference 2023, and we are in full effect in New Detroit, and somebody that's uh, making an impact throughout Detroit, and definitely, we talking legacy black Detroit, so always a friend that Detroit is different, and community, and culture. Dewan Dandridge, how are you doing today, my brother? What up, doe? I am doing well, doing well, man, glad to be um, in the mix here at, at the Just League Conference, um, shout out to Mike Graffrey and the whole team at New Detroit for continuing to push the envelope and bring people to the table for important discussions. All right, and, and so much in the years, in the years' time, uh, Black Leaders Detroit, just everywhere when we see this, and, and really waving a flag and banner of empowering a lot of black organizations and black businesses where... You know, um, it, it, it was something that I know I have not witnessed in, in, throughout Detroit and a lot of other people in the community. Uh, supporting Detroit is different in many other groups. Um, taking that lead from Just Lead and feeling from what I witnessed is like, you know, you all are kind of like filling a gap that many aren't. How does that commitment stay moving forward coming to something like this, talking about racial equity, where it's not a lot of other people in the space doing the work that you do, yeah. but we're talking about the equity of it, but at times it looks like you all stand alone. Yeah, there, there's, there's my ego and my pride that would love to like receive that as truth, right? But the reality is, man, we are, one, we stand on shoulders, you know what I mean? And we are filling a space, right? Um, but we, at, the, at best, we are a part of the solution, not the total solution, right? There are other organizations that are in similar work or aligned and adjacent to the work that we do. Um, if you think about what Charity and Kai and MDBBA are doing, um, even like Prosper Us, um, some, and some of the other organizations uh, that, that were created um, as far as the CDFIs. But I don't think there's, so, so, so they meet all other needs, um, but we are creating a pot of money, right? And I think that's what's so different about what we do is that you have an organization that's uh, created and run by black folk and providing real money in real time to black folk. But the reality is the, the, the money that we're uh, loaning and giving away, like there's so many people that put into that money. Like really it's a collection of people that believe in fairness. You know, and you probably heard me describe it this way before. It's like all we, we did is in a, in a simple but really hardworking way created that thing that we've talked about all our lives. When we were, you know, at the barbershop and we get the barbershop intellectuals that could go deep into things that were plague our communities. Um, or when we had, you know, the, the, the dinner table, at, you know, one of the holidays after the games are off and we're saying like all the stuff that we think is wrong and somebody would inevitably say, if we would just come together, we'd be all right. Right. That's what we feel like we created a place where people that believe in fairness um, could come together for what? A dollar a week. Right. Or more. When we come together in that way, we'll be all right. Right. Our goal is to get a million people making that commitment. If we had a 52 million dollar pot that was recycling itself because portion of the proceeds that go out is the no interest loan that's getting paid back. Like. We, would, we wouldn't be worried about what banks are loaning us money and who's not loaning us money because we'd be loaning us money at no interest. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's deep. And you talk about the other organizations uh, that work in that space, and you're right. Just different functionality, yeah. different utility. Um, 
And, and even on the other side comes when, when you do get the loan, when you do get the money. That's where right. some of the, the training of, uh, shout out Build Institute, Regina. Build Atlanta, Institute was in the house. Way. Uh, what happens there, and even knowing what... Yeah, Rachel doing. Allen out there. Rachel, yeah. yeah. There's so many other partners that uh, that are in this ecosystem, but yes. oftentimes, like I say, it, it seems as though one or two are standing there, and you're intersecting and pooling with so many. How do we uplift and empower where more are aware of the resources available? And then furthermore, that the institutions that are resourcing our community are properly resourced themselves. Sure. One of the things we could do is make sure Detroit is different um, and um, Bridge Detroit is funded at a really, really high level, right? Like, we need y'all to have a marketing budget. You know what I mean? Because you all are telling the stories, right? And that's one of the ways that we really think that the message would get out there. So, um, I mean, it's a multifaceted question, I guess, with a multifaceted answer, I should say. Um, but that's one of the things that comes straight to mind as soon as you ask that question is making sure that, you know, the Detroit is different, is, is out there, um, and that you are not, you know, continue to come out of your pod, pocket um, to make things happen. But there's, there's funding available because we need um, platforms like this. All right, and last question. All right. Uh, oh, this was quick. You get yeah, me out of there quick today. Yeah, I know. I, I I can't believe it unless it like piggybacks and knocks down another domino. <laughs> and sometimes you can do that. Uh, racial equity and and just more so, you enlighten a lot of people that may feel uh, uncomfortable, uh, feel ignorant to to knowing what this is. Yeah. Um, how, how are you leading without the the chip on your shoulder and saying okay? Let me make sure that I can enlighten, can yeah. uh, carry that knowledge, carry that message, and at least share the wisdom and experience. Mm. How do you have that bandwidth yourself? That's a, that's a good question, man. Um, I think a big part of it is, like, you know, I use the reference to doctors. We are the doctors in this space, especially as it pertains to, like, our, one another, but also, like, our white allies or potential would-be allies, right? Um, we are their doctors. Like, this... Racism um, is a sickness, right? That we all, it's in the water that we drink, the air we breathe is definitely in the educational system that educates most of us. So um, I think it was Jane Elliott that, that uh, was asked a question, where, where did she think all white people were racist, right? And she said, her, her answer was something like, if you went through the educational system and you finished the 12th grade and you're not racist, you weren't paying attention, yeah. right? That was her response. So that's two-sided. What she didn't say um, to us is if you went through the system or you didn't go through the system and you don't have an inferiority complex or you're not bitter and angry, right, then you weren't paying attention. Um, so... As I, th as I realize that that's the case for, for, for us, and I say us all, everybody, then there's work that needs to be done. One, internally, like in the mirror, but then externally. So, you know, I'm giving you a really long-winded answer. Oh, no, give it. <laughs> so if, if we're to be the doctor, if we're to be the educator, my thought is that, you know, most students, which... You know, I would say that a lot of our white colleagues that didn't ha don't have to know the stuff that we are forced to know, a lot of them being students, we have to remember the best way to educate someone. And it is not chastising them and busting them upside the head as soon as they get something wrong that they just are ignorant to to begin with. But if you can be a loving teacher, you know what I mean, to say, hey, you know what I mean, like, you know, here's some gentle correction, right, in a way that does not make them feel demonized, right? I'm not saying make them feel comfortable because this is not comfortable for us. So uh, comfort is not priority in this space. I'm not worried about somebody feeling comfortable, but feeling cared for is something different. You know what I mean? So everybody wants that teacher and to hear and learn from a teacher that cares for them. 
nobody wants that. Everybody wants to just avoid that teacher. It's going to pop them upside their head when they get it wrong. Sure. You know, so.